All Things Bike with Fred Thomas is brought to you by Frame and Wheel, eBay selling services for cyclists and bike shops throughout New England, and AD Bikes, the modern face of Austro Daimler Cycling and the bike company of the future. Hi there everybody, I'm Fred Thomas and you are watching another episode of All Things Bike, a new program dedicated to the bicycle, the culture of the bicycle, and the people and the organizations that make the bicycle community roll, here and away. We are speaking with Thomas Wilson, Marketing Director of Gritty's Brew Pub. Thomas. Good afternoon, Fred. Thanks for coming down. Thank, Thank you very much. Now, I know that the intersection of Beer Street and Bicycle Street is a big and busy one, but what is the relationship between Gritty's Brew Pub and cycling? Oh, gosh. Um, well, it, it goes back quite a few years and before my time, so I'll have to give you a little background. But sure, it's, yeah, it's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, there were from what I understand, there were three um, Mug Club members who, from our Freeport location, um, there was um, Bill and Jerry and Patrick who wanted to ride in the trek across Maine, and they approached the um, the owners of Gritties and said, "Hey, would you guys be, you know, happy enough to provide us with jerseys for our um, uh, for our our cycling event here for the mm -hmm. going on the trek?" And right. um, so. John and Billy, who are the owners in Freeport, said, yeah, sure, no problem. And they they basically came up with a green and white logo uh, or a jersey that they um, uh, did the first year. And that marched on for a few years, and they raised a few bucks, and they had a lot of fun. And then um, eventually I had joined the organization mm -hmm. as the marketing director. And so when they went to John again to say, hey, you know, let's do this one more time, John was uh -huh. like, hey, wait a minute. I have just the guy you need to talk to. Yeah, you, this new we can guy. make this really big. <laughs> <laughs> so, Perfect. Yeah. So they show up. I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, in my office. And, um, and I have to admit, uh, this is an unabashed marketing move on my part. Um, it's you okay. Know, yeah. You're among friends. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> in a state that doesn't have billboards, all I could see were all these people riding around with jerseys with Gertie's name on them. Yeah. And um, so... I, you know, I met with with the three guys and uh, with Bill and Patrick and Jerry and and they explained what they wanted to do and we um, actually kind of up the the uh, the jersey and we made an offer that anybody who would join the team we would pay for half of their jersey. Okay. So that's how it started, and after that it takes some weird turns and and as all cycling stories do. That's so. right. So where where are you now? I mean, you have 50 people on the gritty uh, cycling team, and uh, they probably twice as many as that. <laughs> is it, uh, maybe I, I meant 150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's closer. It's about um, the official count is about 94. Okay, and and this team exists uh, and to ride in in the G3 as well as the Dempsey Challenge and, and the then, trek across Maine and the trek across and Maine and the MS ride. Oh and, right. Okay. Um, they the, the the team members sort of take off and they go into a if they want to go do a ride they go do the ride and they can wear our jersey to represent the team and many of them sign up under gritties and and um, and have a great time doing it um, how I got involved really got involved actually involves the Dempsey challenge right um, I had a friend of mine who was a cyclist who was actually on the gritties team and his name's Andy, and Andy approached me, and he said, you know, Thomas, they're, they're starting this new thing. It's called the Dempsey Challenge. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, we're, we're turning 50 years old, you know, so let's, let's go ride 50 miles for our 50th birthdays. And, and our birthdays are really close together. And, and I said, okay, great. So that first year, Fred, as you can imagine, you've been riding for a number of years. Um, yeah, well, you just uh, you got up and decided to ride 50 miles yeah. well, on your we, 50th birthday we, without practicing. Well, right. we, we started early in the year to get okay. ready for the fall. Yeah, uh, yeah but um, we trained like it was the Olympics. Uh -huh. um, I mean, we were sneaking out of work. We were meeting three or four times a week to go ride, and, I, and, and I'll give you this. When I started, I remember the first time I bought my bike and um, rode it out my road 
and back. It was six miles, and I thought I was going to die. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, we all have that, and we yeah. all have that. We yeah. remember that moment. That uh, moment. And yeah. today, um, I don't think twice about going to ride 50 miles. I mean, you know, it's like That's 50 great. miles is a you know Saturday morning, you know, get out That's and right. That's right. Have a good time. And uh, but that first year, it was really, it was a really big deal. And um, Gritties, um, we got involved as a company. Right. And um, we saw it as a great thing, but more importantly, and people do ask me this uh, on occasion, yeah. they say, w why did Gritties get involved with the Dempsey Challenge? Right. Yeah. Well, we, um, it, it was our customers. Um, a lot of our customers in our Auburn pub, they're either right. patients or their staff people or their doctors or their nurses or other medical professionals who work over at Central Maine Medical Center or at the Dempsey Center for Cancer, Hope, and right. Healing. And they kind of asked us, they said, hey, you guys should be involved in this. This is really going to be an amazing event, and it's going to be really cool. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so, again, being a marketing guy and a sponsorship guy, I, I thought, you know what, they're right. And mm -hmm. so that's how it kind of evolved. And, and I got, actually got involved in the second year is when I started riding. Right. And, and I wanted to see, wanted to do it with Andy, but also wanted to see what the ride was like from, the, from a rider's perspective. Right, right. Rather than just being in the beer tent. Yeah, well, what was it like? I've never done it, but I, I mean, I, I know that it's just, it's gotten quite a bit bigger. And, it, it is. Um, um, it's a, it's, it's a, hard. It's a multi-level ride. It, you can start and ride as few as 10 miles and, and ride with your kids and have a great time right. all the way up to doing a century. Mm -hmm. um, I typically do the 50 simply because I don't have time to do the century or the 70 miles yeah. in the daytime. I have other responsibilities that day as well. But um, but the ride is, um, it, it is a challenge for sure. people who who are the weekend warriors. Um, it's a, it can be a hilly course. Um, if it's cold and rainy, it is brutal. Like last last year, last it was year, very cold. It was tough. Yeah. yeah, it was 28 degrees. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was the coldest ride I've which, ever done. Which which length um, should we sign up for if we if we want to ride with Mr. Dempsey? 50. 50. That's okay. what Patrick tends to do. Mm -hmm. um, although the pro riders um, tend to they'll ride with him for a while in the right. 50, but some of them break off and go do the 70 or the 100. Right, right. Yeah. Um, there are some real core people who do the 100. Um, right. Who go out and, and just thrash and, and right, have a right. great time? Yeah. So well, then how how does one join the Gritties team? Is it pretty you, simple through the uh, website or? Yeah, yeah. All you need to do is you send an email to Thomas at Gritties .com, Say hey, I want to join the team, mm -hmm. and I put you in touch with the team captain, and we're a very loosely knit organization. We meet occasionally to train and ride together. We'll meet at a Gritties and go ride. We also do this ride called the G3, yeah, which yeah. is uh, t traditionally held in August. And yeah. we do, um, it's, we ride from Gritties in Freeport to Gritties in Portland to Gritties in Auburn and back to Freeport. Right, right. And it's, um, it's right at 75 miles. Right. And, um, and that ride is particularly geared for experienced riders because it, it, it is, again, it's a grueling ride. There's a lot of hills. Um, it's long. It's going to be warm. It's going to be warm because yeah. we're doing it in August. Um, mm -hmm. It's a tough one. Right. But again, the guys have a great time doing it, and we're raising money typically for the Dempsey Challenge and usually one other charity. Last year we raised money for the Cystic Fibrosis, or Fibrosis Foundation. Right. Um, I, I, I don't know if we've chosen this year who we're doing yet. But. Right. Is, are, there, um, are there a particular kind of um, a charity that, that uh, Gritties decides oh. to get invo no, involved what in? No, we do, you... it's kind of cool. Every year when we do the G3, we mm. ride, um, half the money goes to the Nipsey Challenge, and then I usually let the, the I group kind of pick. And we have like three or four charities that we list, and we let them try to I, I, decide who the money's going to go to. Yeah, we usually raise a couple thousand bucks for each for each charity. So yeah. and and um, and then there's a jersey involved too. So you sign up, you you register, and then you get a jersey. Uh, yep. And, yep. And um, well, tell us about that. I mean, because yours is pretty cool. It's got well, a, this it's is got this a, is the new black fly stout jersey, <laughs> and, and I can't stand up. There's a big Gritties logo on the back. Here, here, I'll try to I'll try to be really cool about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that, but anyway, it's got the. <laughs> Got the Gritties logo on the back. Um, so this is one of several jerseys that we have. 
when you sign up on the team, we will connect you up with a company in Brunswick called a Attain. Uh, uh, yes, Attain. Yes. Jeremy Litchfield. He with was, Jeremy. He's yeah. been on the show talking about the and that I knew those jerseys look familiar. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy makes them for us, and he's he does a brilliant job. So yeah. again, it's it's amazing how connected the um, the cycling community yeah, is. Yeah, I, I know that that intersection intersection of Beer Street and and um, and the, you know there's there's the cyclocross thing that yeah. that. Uh, at least in Europe, they they watch these races and they're they're drinking beer the whole oh, time. Oh, the whole time, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, um, well, you know, it's funny. The G three. Um, I have guys that tell me this, and it's so true. Um, it's you know, you pay your fee, mm -hmm. um, you go out, you ride. There, you don't have to raise any more money, and at the end, you get this great party at Gertie's in Freeport, and we all drink beer and we have a great time. Wow. And and the guys, and we also at the Dempsey Challenge, we actually produce a beer called um, Dempsey's Courage Ale. Oh, that yeah. we sell all summer long, and a dollar from every pint of that beer goes to the Dempsey Challenge. But also, a lot of the at the tent, the beer tent, that's one of the beers wow. we're serving. Oh, that's and um, and people have a great time. But we've we've also kind of spread the kind of the um, the wealth, so to speak. Um, yeah. Baxter Brewing is now involved with this uh, at yeah. the Dempsey. Um, but it's amazing. You're right, Fred. How many people and how many companies? are on that intersection between Beer Street and cycling. It, it's amazing. Yeah, but it, it seems like um, it's part of the, the grittiest culture to, to, um, to think about um, the greater good or the people who, yeah. who are Definitely. struggling. And, and, um, and you do it in a very effective way. I mean, are you seeing any other trends in, in, um, in, in the sort of the marketing um, that you're doing um, with beer and Well, bikes? yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's funny. The, um, the guys that ride, uh, they also, you know, they also do mountain biking. We have a mountain bike event that we actually sponsor that's done over in Parsons Field. Um, we do it at, every August. It's called the uh, the Maine Mountain Bike uh, or M Mountain Bike Micro Beer Mountain Bike Weekend. Wow. Um, so there, so it's starting to branch out a little bit more. Um, we're trying to do a little more with cycling and kind of spread out ourselves a little bit more and, and maybe do some more of those mountain biking events and cyclocross yeah. events. And, um, you know, we've looked at um, sponsoring a team, um, you know, a racing team. I mean, there's there's a lot that we could be doing. But, again, you got to take it one step sure, at a time. Sure, yeah. I mean, before you know it, you're, you know, you'll are you be sponsoring everything. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to do that. No, you, you don't. You, know, you, you, you want to, like focused. I said, you want to make sure that what you're doing has a, has a, a, a um, kind of a, um, a philanthropic yeah. um, aspect to it, you know, that you're giving back. But an, out, an outcome. Right. Well, um, is there a, a beer that you recommend um, for, in particular, for a post 100-mile yes. bike ride? And which yeah. one should I be yeah. reaching Black for? Yeah, Black Out. Oh my gosh! Now, what, tell us about that. Is it? It's a dark beer. Is it? It a, is. It's our. It's our dark beer. Of course, it's a stout. And for those of you who aren't um, familiar with craft beer, uh -huh. a stout is a lot like a Guinness. Most people are familiar with the Guinness. I was. I was gonna say Guinness, but that's all right. That's we okay. can say they're. They're the. They're kind of the world leader. <laughs> Gold but, standard. No. Okay. But, but go on. Um, but our beer. The reason I picked that one is it's. Um, it's fairly low in alcohol content. Um, it's about four point eight percent, but also it's. Um, it's got a lot of grain in it. It's got a lot of hops in it. It's a, it, it's not a thick beer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a real thick mouthfeel to it, but it has a lot of oomph behind it. Right. So it's gonna it's gonna kind of replenish you a little bit. Right, um, right, right. In addition to giving you know, the you know, nice refreshing sort of after, after right now. If it's hot. <laughs> And it's that like in, during the, the de, during the G three or even the Dempsey Challenge yeah. sometimes. Yeah. What what beer should we be drinking at the midway point? <sighs> Vacation Land Summer Ale <laughs> or or Best Bitter. Uh, right. Uh, a, a good IPA, but I don't know if an IPA is going to be as kind of like refreshing. Right. Right. As a as a good kind of well balanced beer, which is what bitter and. Vacation Land Summer Ale are. So. Well, it sounds very good. All right. Well, look, Thomas, thanks so much for coming down and well, thank you talking Fred, about for beer it, and yeah. bikes. And, and uh, we will see you at the Dempsey Challenge I, this year, I promise. Uh, October I'll 1st sign. and 2nd this year. So that's, that's right. And um, so that might be a little warmer than last year, Let's hopefully hope. to be dry. Yeah. But um, it's on my calendar. So All right, we'll great. see you then.
Okay, that was Thomas Wilson, the marketing director at Gritty's Brew Pub. You can learn more about their team by contacting Thomas directly. I believe his email is on the Gritty's uh, website. Yep. And you can find out more about Gritty's and their beer and the G3 uh, ride and the Dempsey Challenge. That's all we have time for for now. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Hi there everybody, it's Fred Thomas from All Things Bike. This is our first episode in the field. We will be talking with Doug Malcolm of the Portland Wheelers. This is a nonprofit organization that provides bicycle rides to individuals who cannot get out and ride a bicycle on their own. I'm the director of Portland Wheelers. It's a nonprofit. We're in our second year and we give rides to folks who are living with all different kinds of disabilities on these very unusual tricycles that are made in the Netherlands and they're designed to break apart so that the front becomes a standalone wheelchair and we can take this into a facility or, or somebody's private home and pick them up, bring them back out, attach them to the back of the bike which is electric assist which allows our volunteers to last uh, for a while and give them rides. We've given now, uh, well including the very start of this year, we've probably given uh, about 150, 160 people rides, and that's a total of about 200 plus rides. We'll probably do about 400 rides or so this year. Um, we serve about 11 or 12 facilities now. Uh, there's a 12th one coming on board, and uh, those are all over Greater Portland, Portland and the abutting towns. And this year initiative will be uh, to get us into neighborhoods where hopefully we can efficiently schedule uh, three or four people in an afternoon or morning shift one at a time at each of their homes, take them out for rides. So what we have up here is the front seat for what we call the wheeler, that's the passenger, and it has adjustable uh, pedals, adjustable shoulder straps, comfortable seating. Um, but the unique feature is that it breaks apart right here. We release that uh, hasp and this becomes a standalone wheelchair that we can take in empty to a facility or into somebody's home, uh, pick them up, bring them back out, uh, all secured in the front seat, reattach it to the rear frame, peddler or pilot we call them, gets on the seat, pedals away and we're off for a ride. Um, the rear has electric assist, it's a regular bicycle frame, has seven gears, manual gears controlled here. Um, the crank has the old style or, or kid style rear brakes, so as you back pedal gradually puts the brake on the rear wheel, there's brakes up here as well as the back. and. Uh, and then the electric assist is a battery pack here, a computer. Uh, it responds to the pressure, the back pedal pressure as we're, we're going up hills and all. It's all silent, um, very nuanced, uh, subtle, but quite powerful. And then we just keep our supplies and stuff in here. Um, doesn't go very fast, but it goes anywhere. We take it off trail when we want to, uh, go across lawns, uh, up slopes, pretty much anywhere we want to go. Um, and our limits are 250 pounds up front. So even with that kind of weight, my weight, and the weight of the bike, uh, it's not a problem to ride anywhere. Um, Ta-da! Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bike Tour. We are here with John Baldwin of Gorham Bike and Ski and he is gonna give us a tour of a bike that he has brought down for us today. Hi, John. Hey, Fred. Thanks for coming down again. Thanks for having me again. Anytime. Yeah. Wow, what do you have for us today? Well, today I brought a giant Propel. Nice. Yeah. Wow, now this is an aero bike, right? That's what, oh, for that's sure. what we're calling them. Yep, this, uh, this bike's all about cheating the wind. It's yeah. a aerodynamic road bike or aero road bike, as that's you mentioned. Right, that's right. So what, I mean, what does that mean? I mean, it's got the frame. I mean, let's talk about the frame set. It's an aero frame set. I can mm. see some aerodynamic features going on there. What's the most important thing, do you think? Well, as you mentioned, the, the frame design, everything is built around just being um, aerodynamic. So mm. the, the down tube, the top tube, seat tube, uh, seat stays and right. the fork blades especially yeah. are all just designed to shed wind as quickly as possible with the least amount of resistance. Right, right. So I can see that with the chain stay. It's, it's, it looks like a wing. Yeah. And I can see the, the way the, um, the down tube has a, is, is maybe taller, a little bit taller mm. than it is wide. Yes. And the front forks too, very, very narrow. Sure. 
Um, and I can see how the, the rear wheel sort of tucks into the, the yeah, seat like tube. Yeah, it's scalloped beautifully right, right there into the seat tube for yeah. just the, the closest chain stays you can right. possibly get. Well, what about um, some of the other features um, about you know, the routing, for example, and I mean, how do they get aero with that? Oh, because of that, uh, and because of the frame design, um, internally routing the cables is the way to go, and they've done that actually by it being kind of behind the stem, behind oh. the steer tube, um, so the routing of the cables, um, instead of being through the front of the head tube, which right. is on a lot of more traditional road bikes, or even on the older road bikes yep. where it's uh, external mm -hmm. and you have uh, bare cables going underneath the down tube, uh, this kind of cuts down on wind resistance as much as possible, uh, goes through the down tube and to the various components that they control. Yeah, that's very neat. There are yeah. no cables around, and, and gone are the days when you had cables yeah. coming out around here. <laughs> that, yeah. that stopped happening a long time ago. For what sure. about um, components? We've got something interesting going on with the brakes. Yeah. Yeah, those are especially designed by Giant for this frame. Mm -hmm. And they're, if you take a look at them, they're pretty close to what you would find on like a rim brake mountain bike if you were still able to find one nowadays, yeah, right. a new one at least. Uh, they're close to like a V-brake uh, or they're closer to it, like a miniature V-brake. Right. And they're on the trailing edge of both the forks and the um, seat stays. Yeah, sure enough. Look at that. I mean, normally the front brake is on the front of the of the fork, yep. and this one it's behind and that is, I guess, cheating the wind one more yep. time. Yep, exactly, um, nice. to decrease wind resistance just a little bit more. Right. And if you have these perfectly dialed in, they should be flush with the fork when not in use, uh -huh. and uh, when you use them they'll kind of partially go in right, like right, that. Right, right, right. Well, um, that's extraordinary stuff. What about the, the gearing? Let's talk about that quickly. We've got 11-speed. Um, uh, Shimano Altegra. Um, what's going on with that, do you think? Exactly. So um, instead of you know the older 10-speed, uh, which was around for quite a while, uh, most bikes, uh, especially higher-end road bikes, are 11-speed now. That's right. Uh, it's still mechanical shifting. There is the I2 out there to be had. Yeah. Um, but this is uh, mechanical. Right, it's right. really easy to shift these newer ones because of the amount of mechanical advantage you have with the newer designed pulleys. Right. Uh, more or, leverage, yeah, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Right. More yeah, leverage right. for your front derailleur right. and greater mechanical advantage so for your rear derailleur. Easier to shift, more gears to pedal, and, and then the weight on this is 16 pounds. I mean, this particular bike, it's, it's eight, what, 16, 15, 18? It was uh, light enough for the Downies racing team to use it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. I mean, I, I always sure. say, I mean, uh, bikes are light, and if you pedal them long enough, they begin to feel heavy. But, yes. but this, is, this is not the lightest bike around um, because of the aerodynamic features. Is that fair to say? I think it is, yeah, for sure. And you could make this bike a lot lighter with uh, upgraded wheels, that's for sure. That's true, yeah. Um, but, yeah, generally aerodynamic bikes aren't typically super light, as yeah. light as possible. Yeah. Climbing road bikes are more so. That's right, and, I, yeah. and that's because, the way I understand it, the tubes are bigger, there's more carbon, they're exactly. creating these, these aero shapes. Mm -hmm. And um, exactly, I mean, if you put aero wheels on this thing, um, it would be um, certainly heavier, but um, it might be uh, more aero in the sense that, that the wheels have deeper rims mm -hmm. and maybe you'd have different kinds of tires on it. Yeah. Sweet looking bike. Now, where Thanks. can people go to take a look? Well, the Giant Propel is available at Gorm Bike and Ski oh, at yeah. 693 Congress Street in Portland, Maine. Right on. So we can get down there and take a test ride, even though we know what will happen. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. John. That's great stuff. Cool. Thank you, Fred. Thanks, everybody. That was John Baldwin of Gorham Bike and Ski. You can take a look at the Giant Propel at their shop, and you can also learn more about the bike at GorhamBikeAndSki.com. That's all we have today for this bike tour. We'll see you again soon.